Hunter x Hunter, episode 100 spectacular. Tracking X in X pursuit. I support Knuckle and, Chi and Shoot on their move to capture Chida. Chidu. It's gotta feel so much better just actually doing something than sitting in their treehouse, nests, whatever it was. At which point, debt will start accumulating. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> the best ability ever. I feel like if this is a game, it's one of those hacks you would do where you'd want to get the little interest boy <laughs> to keep it as a costume. Like you'd engage with Knuckle and then just not finish that side quest. Maybe just me. It's a cute little thing, like a little accessory that you have. It's special. It's like a piece of Knuckle always with you at all times. It's a massive window, as usual. And we gotta get shirtless <laughs> because reasons. It's part of my my uh, my nan, my ability. It's the condition. <laughs> condition X shirtless. Shirtless X condition. <laughs> I don't know why that's hilarious. It's nice of them to finally reveal <laughs> what animal Cheetah was supposed to be. I was thinking about the two of them after the last episode. It was a really great setup for their characters, having them be initially quibbling, not really on the same page at odds personality-wise. Now, to me, it feels like they're totally united just from that common gesture, them being similar where it counts. Who the hell cares about the other stuff and their little petty differences? <laughs> Smell. Not Nen. Animal Nen. Oh. Oh, we got a narc. Oh, no. But also, yes. Oh, well, no, I don't know how to feel about this. Oh, whatever. Bring it on. Rat. This is a bizarre thing to say. Leol reminds me of somebody I went to high school with. King of a very small world. What's always been so terrifying about Neverpedo is the fact that she just seems to be having a great time all the time. All this is just a like, game, like a childhood game. Damn. All the people sitting on their hands. Clue, cool, like saving saving lives against all odds. This is the kid who was paralyzed with fear. You know, not what, five episodes ago? What does he want? How did he catch up to him? Oh, and they still, I love they're animating the little dead thing. See? It's a costume. Are you going to like it? Yet? It gives you a boost to your aesthetic. Oh, what? Interesting. Oh, wow, they're enhancing their soldiers. That seems like he was on his way to do that anyway. Also terrible that the the ants, the chimera ants are more cohesive as a group, more organized than the humans. Does that tie into what I was saying about how maybe the optimal thing is a really great, competent, good, strong central leader, a single unifying vision, as opposed to inner squabbling, which, you know, arguably is by design to prevent the dangers of that all-powerful leader. But if there is that unicorn, you know, a really powerful figure who, who's really good at leadership, being a king, there does seem like there's an advantage there when it's not going horribly, horribly wrong. Way zoomed out thing related to this, I was thinking about how so much of life's design, including a lot of humanity's base human traits and education, which I've been talking a lot about in free run, it's not about optimization for the good. It's about optimization for avoiding the worst because a game over event is so much more significant and dire than minor improvements or differences in the scale from good to great. The more I think about it, the more I think that's a useful concept for evaluating systems and trying to think about what's actually optimal as opposed to what is the status quo, which is probably there as a protective measure, not as the best possible measure. And maybe more significant to day-to-day -day life, a lot of our emotions thoughts are not designed 
designed for what's optimal for us. They're designed to keep us safe, which is a blessing, something to be thankful for, but also something to be questioned in periods of relative safety. <laughs> You mentioned it. <laughs> Most important metric, yo-yo range. Most important metric, yo-yo range. Clue looking a little bit shook, which is understandable. He's way, way out over that line. <laughs> What, what, what are these things? Yeah, yeah, this is fodder for Kalua. Yeah, Squid just gets the kill mercilessly. <laughs> Damn, what the hell? Yes. It's amazing. Good, good. <laughs> it's so terrible, it's so great at the same time. Whoa, where did this come from? And what just happened? That was not his strike. Why does it feel like such a long time coming? It's episode 100. And we know Clue is an absolute monster. <laughs> but like so many things have kept him at bay. It's so cool to see him just let loose. Finally. This is what I wanted at the beginning of the arc. It was a short scene, but that was really well done. And thematically for Clue and the whole family thing, his abilities work in, in thematic tandem with the family drama. The things he's learned, his history, his tools, his skills, they're all connected to something he's trying to spiritually escape. But I think the cool thing about that is that in real life, the things you identify in yourself that you hate, that you got from your upbringing, a lot of the time have a very strong up side once you stop being dictated and controlled by them. When things stop becoming reactionary and they just become tools at your disposal, you might have the experience where you realize what a gift it is. Speaking for myself, I would say my household was very intellectually combative. Or it's something like there was a cynical color to a lot of my childhood discussions. And early on, I think that translated into me kind of just adopting that as a package and being very combative, being sort of jaded, cynical, contrarian for the sake of being contrarian as opposed to a way to explore other ideas, to find truth. And those absolutely still come out as flaws now and then. But having grown up to become more increasingly aware of these things, they become a little bit more like on off switches. I don't have to use them, but that creates this really cool freedom where it's like fun to use them. And I appreciate what I went through, even the numerous missteps along the way. That's a lot to read into this scene of Kalua demolishing some ants, but I think that's maybe what part of what makes it so emotionally impactful. Like Kalua got all this stuff through blood, sweat, tears, and daddy issues or brother issues. But having moved past that, having removed the, the pin, he's got all of that, plus he's a good person. And like he's literally using this to save people. Like he's fighting the like the biggest threat to humanity there maybe ever was. And he looks so cool doing it. Is that what that was? You must murder him. I don't think there's a bigger problem. <laughs> we got farted on. <laughs> That's the worst part of this whole thing. Actually, the worst thing of this all is that now he's out of yo-yo range. <laughs> Did he just, did Kalua just survive a gunshot? Okay. Oh, oh no, 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 oh no, Uvagen flashbacks. Those shooting fleas. Flea bullets. Oh, they're sniper calculations. They're, uh, they're bullets. You can probably look at the sniper though, right? I don't like this. I don't like this. Wait till he finds out it's from his testicles. Testicle fleas were not on my, was not on my bingo card for this episode, but here we are. From the great mind that brought you Pike's butthole and skin hole man comes flea testicles. He just has fleas. He dodged it. You must know the trajectory now. Look, if Gon can figure out echolocation on a whim, you can figure out triangulation. Okay. Yeah. How, how fast can this guy run with this giant testicle sack? We'll take it. It's enough. Okay, 
He is strangulating with his face. Okay. Okay. And they also can see you, and this is Gon staying out of trouble. He's only encountered eight enemies so far. Also, it just occurred to me, thinking about the fact that Gon will likely not flee from anything he encounters, that Kalua had all these issues about fleeing in such a negative light. And granted, that was connected to Gon, who's not currently here, but he just mentioned I should flee and hide and get out of sight, and like I didn't even think anything of it at the time, and I don't think Kalua even thought anything of it, despite the fact that it's fleeing, because it was never the fleeing that was the issue. It was the, the doubt, the lack of control, not feeling confident in one's ability to make a choice. Once you you, know, you can or can't do something, it loses its sting. You know, you stop feeling like you have to do it. You don't need to prove anything. First comes Ruck. <laughs> Imagine. Go just frustrated. He doesn't have something to punch. What do you want? I'm Camilio. Oh, that was close. Good, good, smart. Isn't this the guy from that Johnny Depp movie? What was it, what was it called? Rango? I mean, he looks so, so cute and innocent compared to Kalua walking away in that forest. Ah, with it. Okay. Wait, he under he's listening. What do you want? No, just destroy him. Please end this character. But he's got backup. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Obviously. Haven't we learned a lesson about caves? Whoa, that is amazing. Alright, he's also got octopus or squid or something. Oh no. Oh, this is the squid thing. This is real form. See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing that I call him an octopus at first. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, this guy. He fleas and testicles, and he's a parasite. His design ends up being kind of cute, though. Why do I feel like, based on his demeanor and the way they're setting him up, he's not a total enemy? Damn, that episode was just a showcase for, for Kalua. Wow. It's always been there as potential, but I feel like this is one of the best action moments from Kalua, if not the best, I've seen so far in this show. And it feels good, extra good, considering all the emotional weight of his journey this season, this arc.